What's up, San Diego and everybody out, out there? We uh, started a new podcast. I'm Braden Suprenant alongside Matt Perez here in San Diego. Joining us from Arizona is Will Galvez, and we are Why Start a Podcast? Why Start a Podcast? Well, a lot of us wanted to get an opportunity to, to talk some ball. Some of us wanted to get an opportunity to get back into podcasting and radio hosting, if you will, and some of us on an extra platform to to work on different things. And so we have started a podcast. It's called Why Start a Podcast. We are Gaslamp's finest media. You can check out all of our stuff on all our new social media accounts at Gaslamp, Gaslamp's finest on Twitter and Instagram. We've got TikTok now and any ones that I'm missing. I think those are the main ones that I have. We also have a website, Gaslamp's, Gaslamp's finest media. Dot com. You can check out all of our stuff. We'll have blogs, different podcasts. But we're going to try to do this once a week, every Tuesday around 6 o'clock. A little bit late starting today just because we had to get all the equipment in. Do want to give a huge shout-out to Todd Durkin and his Impact Podcast for letting us use his studio while he is away. We're going to be allowed to use his studio each and every Tuesday. So a big shout-out to the Impact Podcast. We're going to talk more about that later on to kind of plug what, what he's been up to and what he's been working on. But a big thanks to Todd Durkin um, to have us be able to use his studio here in the, the San Diego area. Um, how's everybody doing? Matt? Will? Good. Fired up for this. Ready to uh, talk some ball, talk some lifestyle, and uh, have a good time on here. Will, what's going I on give there? A, I'm a- I want to give a huge shout out to the Fiesta Landings apartment complex and my home improvement bedroom studio. So not as, uh, not as fancy as Todd's, but no, great. I'm excited, Matt. Matt, this is going to be a good time. Um, I think it's well overdue and there's never a shortage of anything to talk about, especially now with how crazy the internet is and, and Twitter. Um, I refuse to call it X. Um, there's a lot going on. So I think this is going to be a lot of fun and, you know, we're at a prime time of the year and, you know, baseball starting up soon and, you know, we're still the Super Bowl coming up and we'll get into everything, but no, I'm excited. This is going to be a good time. Um, uh, and it is going to be uh, fun to, to discuss a lot of different things. So I want to get, get kind of started with, uh, the weekend and, and what we had, you know, coming up on the, on last weekend. Uh, it was kind of funny. Like I finally get to Arizona to visit Will. And Will's actually back here in San Diego. It was almost to a point where I felt like we were changing. We were just jumping on each other's plane um, yep. after Will landed and I took off uh, to mm-hmm. go to Arizona. I was out in Arizona for a wedding. Uh, big congratulations to Dylan Smith and Ash- now Ashlyn Smith, uh, previous Ashlyn York, to the uh, happy couple that is married in Apache Junction. Again, for some reason, my friends like to get married in obscure locations. Can't tell you why. Apache Junction seems to be one of those locations, as well as Decatur, Texas, for another friend's wedding. But I digress from that. It was a good time. I was a part of the wedding, so I had to do a lot of wedding things, like get there at 10 in the morning for a 3.30 wedding. I don't know what that was necessary for. How many of you guys have been... Have, have you been part of a wedding, Will? Have you been part of a wedding party? No, I have not. I feel like a loser. I feel like a lot of my friends are just kind of holding out and not getting married. Um, they so, been mar- oh, okay. So not of your, a lot of my college friends have gotten married already. I think it's, no, a- mine are still, yeah, they're still going single. Um, I've been to a couple weddings, but no, that's really early. Do you get like, do you get to pregame that or like, what, what well, the hell do you like, do? Usually you do like four hours. I've been fortunate enough to now be a part of two different weddings, both of my college friends. And one of them that was in Decatur, Texas was one where we could pregame before they had like a groom suite. The groom suite okay. was kind of cool okay. at this one in Apache Junction. Like, you walk in. I post it on my Instagram. I have a video of it. I, I guess I could show it on the podcast if I can pull it up. But anyway, you walk in, and it's like it was like two different rooms for the groom suite. You walk in. Mm-hmm. Like, you look to the right, and there's a bar. They got, like, a little, like, makeshift bar, the fridge, microwave on top. And then they had, like, a TV on the wall that we watched a lot of college basketball on starting at 10 in the Good. morning. They had a Good. poker table. You could play poker if you want. They had you can chairs. gamble in Arizona as well. That's right. I did do a couple parlays when I was out Good. there. <laughs> um, they had two like changing rooms, obviously, to get ready. Like put your like you know nice clothes on. A big table. You can have like you know we ended up having lunch at that table. Okay. Had um, so that was like one room. Then you walk through a door, 
And inside the second room was like, it was like a billiard room, dude. They had like a pool table and they had another giant TV, had another bar, right? A couple of like uh, bar tables, like some high tops. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of a cool hangout spot. You walk in, but then, you know, had a little balcony that overlooked, you know, the wedding venue in particular where the wedding was going to be. I also had a picture of that on my Instagram. Um, Mm -hmm. And then like the, the, the super, I think it's the superstition mountains. It's called the superstition manor. But like one of the main rules is like you couldn't drink before the bars open. So what? I, I I don't understand. I didn't get it. Like that was like, well, you can't like <laughs> we're a bar here, so like you can't bring in your own alcohol. Like you're gonna have to pay for it like at a certain time when we open up our bar. And I was like, that's super lame because we heard that at the rehearsal. And so like the next day, <laughs> it was me and Dylan's two high school buddies. Like dude, like let's just go get some stuff. I had. I already had a case of Coors Light and, and Michelob's in my fridge at my Airbnb, you know, just to have mm. some stuff to drink. This guy was locked and loaded. I was, I was locked. I was ready to go. And I was like, look, man, I got two cases in there. I'm leaving tomorrow. Like, I'm not going to finish it all. Like, why don't we just bring those over, dude? And Dylan was just totally against it. Like, he didn't want to, he didn't want to upset anybody. He didn't want to piss anybody off. And he just didn't, he didn't let us drink before the thing. I was like, all right. So I didn't even, I sat there from 10 to like one. Cause at one o'clock, we're supposed to take pictures. One o'clock pictures didn't start till two thirty. Well, he didn't need you hammered taking pictures. So you sat there I, I for four hours, dude, just doing... <laughs> watching like random college basketball games, and then and throwing down bets. Dude, I didn't throw out any bets though. I couldn't. I was trying to get the NFL ones in because I knew I was flying the next day. Dude, I don't trust betting on college basketball in general. The best. I, no, it's just I, college, it's the best. I can't. I can't, I can't do. Why? That. What can't you trust about it? It's the best. I don't. I don't trust the college basketball. Yeah, dude, it's volatile. You're betting, it's perfect. You're betting on 18 to 20 something year old. I, yeah, I can no. do it for football because I know like there's enough there's enough um disparity between like two teams. Like you can be like, all right, they're gonna cover this or like right. that. But college basketball, it's like it's like you can't do spreads, you gotta do money lines. And like all the basketball spreads. the basketball is my wheelhouse, the <clears> big twelve, dude. And I don't trust the big twelve because every big twelve game it seemed like, or at least the stat was going into the game on Saturday, was 40% of Big 12 games have been decided by five points or less. You have no idea. Kansas went down to UCF and got their ass kicked by the UCF Gold, the UCF Knights. And you're at Kansas. It's like you don't know what you're going to get in the Big 12. So it's and then hard they lost to, to Iowa State. Yes, they lost to Iowa State. I mean, but like, you know, That's TCU great. beats two great. top 10 teams in the country in Houston and Oklahoma in the same week. Then the next week, lose to the Cincinnati the on the road <laughs> and Iowa State at home. And then they go back the next week, beat Oklahoma State in a dogfight, which shouldn't have been a dogfight, and yeah, then beat Baylor in triple overtime, which I'm going to get to that in a second. And then again, beat Texas Tech tonight. There, you have no idea what's going to happen in the Big 12, which makes it so entertaining to watch. But So I didn't bet on college basketball. So I was trying to find different things to do. I think they ended up, you know, we made like a run for stuff. Dude, it so my the the two guys I was with Dylan and Brady the best man and then my buddy's other high school friend Dylan a different Dylan we had Brady and Brayden as part of the wedding party a Dylan, Dylan that was getting married and then another Dylan which made everything confusing sounds for like it's well all that stuff so Dylan shambles not the guy that got married and Brady I don't remember his last name the best man. We went. We did a Circle K run because I needed a coffee, dude. I was like, I had to get here super early. They didn't have breakfast or anything for us, which is fine. Whatever. I they had booze. They had booze. They had like they had they. He ordered two bottles of champagne to like start the whatever. So I was like, so but that was like a bottle of champagne is like four <laughs> glasses, and there was like six of us. So like we knocked those. There's out six like, grown men that yeah, are there. Just knocked out two. <laughs> And we were, dude, we didn't use the champagne glasses. We used oh, like solo glass, cups. <laughs> we used like solo cups and filled to the brim. Um, so I was like, I need a coffee. I might as well get some other stuff. <clears throat> they bought like a, Dylan bought like a 12 pack of Twisted Teas nice, to like, to like up. bring him in. I was like, oh yeah, dude, I'll, Twisted Teas. They didn't bring him out of the car, dude. He just kept running to his car and drinking in his car <laughs> instead of just bringing a 12 pack in and throwing it in the fridge where nobody would notice. I and it was hot out. So it was. So it was those nice. Drinks it wasn't hot, even staying but cold. it wasn't nice. Yeah. Well, it was yeah, but cold. you want a cold drink? Why would I you? Agree. I, I'm not. Dude, uh, I mean, the wedding. Been, the only thing I was thinking is like, I didn't want to like sneak it in and then burn Dylan, who was paying for. His, he's basically paying his way for his own wedding, because mm. the wife's dad was 
kind of a dick about it. Like didn't want didn't want mm. to pay for it. So like, did he enforce the no drinking rule as well? I've never met. So <laughs> she had so like the, her her like her like actual dad like wasn't like part of her life too much. Oh wow, we're getting in the weeds here with this, right? One. So, <laughs> we went so like, so but he, but he, but he had a troubled childhood. But <laughs> so like, she has like her 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 real dad, and then her dad that raised her, which is her sister's dad. Okay. Um, they have the same mom, sister's dad, and then like her mom's new husband. So like, she did three like. There's a lot of moving parts. She there. did three like father daughter dances, as part of like the the <laughs> wedding. Which is why, like, I was just like, okay. There was a and first, could, second, and third act. Right, and the first, the first act was like the dad that like wasn't really part of her her life, who didn't pay for like the wedding, but like did, wanted did to food? like do the dance, but and they wanted, wanted to do there. and wanted to and wanted to like you know bring her to the altar. I was talking about that with like my dad. My dad's like, whoa, 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 whoa man, you you can't like not pay for the wedding and then expect to get all the dad stuff if you weren't part of like the. Right. Life. It was weird, dude. Right. And like, yeah, you don't earn, you didn't earn it. I watched, I watched. I watched the the first dance. And dude, those are like, you know, I don't want to be like disrespectful, but the, it's like, okay, she's dancing with her dad. Like Dylan's going to dance with his mom. It's the same yeah. It's the same shit every time, right? So, mm. I was like, I'm going to watch like her family and see what their reaction was. Nobody watched them. The first one, nobody watched. It's brutal. I was, was brutal. What were they doing? There was like some serious animosity there. There was some animosity there. For sure. So then she dances with her dad. Then she dances with the dad that raised her, which is a little bit like more okay, right? right? And then she danced street. with like the third dad, which was like over like the last couple of years. <laughs> and he was in the country. He's in the Arizona Country Music Hall of Fame. I didn't wow. know it was a thing. Hmm. He was kind wow. of funny though. I liked him. We had some beers. I had some beers with him like the night before. Probably shooting whiskey. Right. And I was like, so that was like, that was the, the reception part, whatever. That was interesting. But anyway, the... the you know, I sat around all day. He sat around all day. It's like a hurry up and wait thing, just like this industry. It's a hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. We finally take the pictures, whatever. Um, and like TCU's like in the like late in the I know it's late in the second half by the time they t the they start like the wedding process, and the wedding planner's like, no phones in your pockets, nothing in your pockets. I can see it in your pockets. It looks bad. I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. So I leave my phone. You can upstairs. see your bulge. <laughs> <laughs> I leave my phone upstairs. Uh, in the groom's suite. I have my watch, and like you're like supposed to be like right over left, right? And I just keep kind of peeking at my watch. No updates. My watch is still singing on my phone, so it's not like that's an issue. No updates. And I'm like sweating out. I'm like, dude, they, we're up. At, 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 we're, we're up like late in this game. We should be able to, we should be able to get this. So I, wedding finishes. It's the cocktail hour. You know, we're taking pictures. I'm still, like, trying to check. And I told my buddy Nick, who was in the wedding, I was like, look, dude, you're going to have to check. Like, how are we doing? He's like, well, I don't know. I've got a notification yet. I'm like, pull it out. Like, like where are we at here? Let's go. Dude, and step so, up. Come on. We're doing the pictures and everything. And, dude, somebody told me this is an Arizona thing. And then I talked about it on another show, like, on my show during the weekday. And, like, somebody from Arizona was like, it's absolutely not a thing. Have you ever heard of, a like, a beer mule or a booze mule? No. Dude, they had this light. They had this donkey walking around with two like bags full oh, of awesome. beer, like coolers, like on the side. And he was just walking around. He's pull like a like a like a Diet Miller out of his out of That's his satch, and he's popping. He'd just be walking around, dude, doing his thing. The beer mule. We had to take pictures with the beer mule as a wedding party, dude. Like, and mules are obviously stubborn. That's where the stubborn mule comes from. So the guy, the mule keeper or guy that like owns the mule, was trying to get him like set in the. The, the the photographer lady's like, oh, can we get the mule to like kind of angle this way? I'm like, dude, it's an animal <laughs> with beers on the side. I was like, you kidding me? So they let us take no some pictures with some beer though. That but that was my first my first beverage of the day. Came off was at hockey. four o'clock, off of an ass, <laughs> <laughs> off of an ass. So the could, beer so there mule. Wasn't a there wasn't a saddle on the on the mule like you the, the ride saddle. It. There was a saddle on the mule. And on either side of the saddle was like a crate with ice in it, basically, oh with a God. bunch of <laughs> bottled beers in it on both sides. A variety of, you know, Miller Lights, Coors Lights, Michelob's, Bud Lights. I mean, all of Budweiser's. I mean, you name it. It was in it was in the satchel on the side of the 
the mule that had flowers and beers on it. That's I couldn't. Insane. I've never seen that before in my life. That's the most Arizona shit I've ever heard. What? It, I, I've dude, never. Somebody heard said that it before. wasn't an Arizona thing. I thought it was hilarious. I mean, I couldn't. I couldn't. That sounds like it. something in the SEC. <laughs> I could see that. I could see that. So anyway, so that was the, that was the first of the, the wedding part, right? Of the uh, that was my first beverage of the night. It was like at four o'clock. So we finished the pictures, and I go back out. It's, there's, I'm telling you right now, there's got to be like a minute left in the game. The game tipped off at 1. It's like 4 o'clock. And I'm like, where's the game at? And then my buddy Nick pulls out on his phone, and it's like kind of buffering. I'm like, why are we doing this? It's literally up upstairs right now in the groom suite. Let's just go up there and watch it. So I go up there and watch it, and we were actually in overtime at the time. And I'm like, all right. I get up there. Me, Nick, my buddy Chet, and his wife were, up, were upstairs watching the end of the TCU game. It's in first overtime. There's literally like a minute left. It TCU's up six. And I'm like, this is great. Like finish this off, go back down, mingle amongst the crew. Go grab a beer. Go grab another ass. beer from the mule. Yeah. Get my Slap ass. the ass on the ass. Give yeah. me an ass. Give me a diet Miller from the ass. And, Ready to roll. and we're, and we're cruising. I mean, like we're winning. Like this is going to be the best. This is going to be the big, it's the energy boost I need. Big Frogs win at the new arena for Baylor. Shot from the moon because I don't know where their camera placement is, but it's terrible. I mean, you're you are in the rafters watching that game. So TCU's up six. You know they they miss the free throws. But uh, Baylor comes back, hits a three. Like they're up three, miss free throws again, or they make one, and you know Baylor kind of battles their way back and then hit a three at the buzzer. Like basically at the buzzer to send it to double overtime. And I'm like, well, we can't watch up here anymore. We got to go back downstairs. So we go back downstairs and, you know, same thing, like kind of some phone issues, whatever, like trying to put it together. You know, it's like checking the game. Like old, we're going old school. We can't stream it because the internet sucks. We're like checking the the game cast on the ESPN app. Seeing the ball go into the hoop. Yeah, and you're like, oh, well, I guess he it missed it. And it's plays behind. And it's like five plays in a row. It's double OT. <laughs> So, and TCU's kind of, like, giving up a lead. They're, like, I think they get up, like, down six or something late, and they're, like, okay, here we go. Now we have to go to the bride suite because now the bride suite, and now we're getting ready to enter the reception. So I'm in the bride suite watching, you know, the TCU game get to the end of, like, near the end of double overtime. And actually, no, on the way up to the bride suite, TCU, we had watched them get a shot clock violation tied at 94 with 35 seconds left. Something like, there was like 40 seconds left in the game, and they get a shot clock by They didn't give it a shot off, so Baylor gets it back with 16 seconds left. We get up to the bride suite, they missed, because one of my buddies, who was supposed to be at the wedding that decided not to go because he couldn't get out of his pub shift over at, at Pub and Fort Worth, Texas. Yeah, priorities. Text, third overtime. <laughs> so I'm up there in the bride suite. I got the... the <laughs> the member of the the wedding party, the the bridesmaid that I'm paired with, like trying to come up with like some cute idea to like be introduced. I'm like, whatever, dude, like pick, pick whatever you want. I'm, I'm a little busy right now <laughs> with, with the TCU Baylor game. Not frog. knowing, to watch this. not knowing that she was a Baylor grad, Oh, which is just makes it, it's like, okay, it could have been a different, actually, no, I think somebody else was a Baylor grad also the same name, but anyway, I digress. So we're getting in line. DJ's talking to us like, oh, look, we're going to do all this cool. Is this DJ voice. We're going to do this. Like, it's going to be cool. I'm like, not paying attention. I was like, glued to my phone, <laughs> triple overtime. TCU gets the lead by like one point. They go up like 103, 102. And the music's cranking. And I'm, you know, on the stairs about to go down. It, it felt like I felt like I was in the Notre Dame tunnel, like play like a champion today, getting ready to be introduced, in. getting introduced. And I guess we've decided that we're going to cheers and down my, my Coors light. Like after we get introduced as the part of the wedding party and I got my phone in my hand, I got my beer in the other hand. I'm trying not to nervously pound the beer that I need to pretend to chug when I get introduced. They introduce the people, two people in front. It's one person in front. Game goes to review with like 20 seconds left and we're up one. And then I go, I got to pocket this, dude. I got to pocket the phone. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't go down there on my phone getting introduced to the wedding party trying to like coordinate too many things. I'm like, I'm about to sweat it out. So I go, I get through, you know, cheers, whatever. Drink the beer. Okay, get to my table. Buddy Nick, again, sleeping at the wheel when it comes to the TCU game. Doesn't have his phone out ready to go. I go, what's going on? Right as the time as I put my phone away, TCU is up one with 1.4 seconds left. 
I get down to the to the table and I go, what did we win? Is it over? It should have been over, right? One point four the game should be over. My buddy Nick goes, Um, it's TCU up one with one point four seconds left. And I was like, Yeah, no shit, dude. I just that's literally what the last play was. I said, pull Thanks, out Nick. your phone Appreciate and it, start streaming the game. I get I, I think it's over, but you're never too sure. And we just went through two overtimes with this game. Uh right as Dylan and Ashlyn get introduced to the the reception, as soon as they get introduced, bam, game goes final. TCU wins 105-102. Wild. Happily absolute ever after right absolute there. wild start to the evening. I mean, that just cranked it out for the rest of the night. I mean, I was fired up at that point. Bring, bring on the booze. Donkeys. Bring in the other mule. Uh, it was a good wedding overall. Bring in, bring in the whole um, pack. <laughs> but, here, dude, how about this? I don't mind... What's your take on this? I don't, I don't I don't mind half of this. It was beer and wine were free, but you had to pay for a cocktail. I think that's fine. I think that's a good move for weddings, not only to save money, but to make sure people get absolutely shit-faced by drinking mm-hmm. a bunch of cocktails that they like, oh, it's free. I'll just get another one. And they leave it, and then they waste a bunch, and then they're getting hammered at the bar. So it was free beer and wine, until eight o'clock and then at eight from eight o'clock to 10 you had to pay for whatever anything you had to pay for everything so those free miller those free miller lights and coors lights turned into eight dollar miller lights and coors lights after eight o'clock so if you had to pay after eight did, did like the mule have like a venmo like hanging around dude, the mule left dude it? there was another bar oh, the mule was just a just delivery the mule was just a delivery and boy transport him right he was, he was he was door dashing after he that. Door, exactly. Yeah, he was going to he was doing the door <laughs> dashes the to all the people in Apache Junction that were out there doing their thing. Wait, but, so okay, so if you had to pay for drinks after eight, when did the drinking start? At six? So you got two hours of free drinks essentially then? Or what, yeah, what dude, was the like? we, the the actual like wedding itself was like probably like five minutes. It took like it it seemed like it seemed like it lasted like five minutes. It it was okay. so quick. Um but I was in the middle of like going here, going there, going here, going there. I only had like, I only got like two beers in me before the reception started. And then during the reception, Mm -hmm. it was like, you had to get up to go get, you know, the drink at the bar. And I ended up getting like two more, but it's like, it's only light beer, right? So it's like, you can't, it's like water. It was like, it was like four light beers over a span of four hours. I mean, zero, zero buzz whatsoever. And you're trying to catch up and there's a line and people are trying to, and by the time, I mean, I just couldn't, I just didn't get a buzz the whole night just because it was too, too, too pay, uh, spaced out, but I think that was pretty fun. I mean, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but um, it was a fun wedding. I, I do bring up the concept. I mean, there's a lot of people that were like, I can't believe you're on your phone at a wedding. Like, you're supposed to be like when watching your favorite team play. I think it's fair to watch your favorite team play. I think if you're watching something else, I think it's ridiculous. Like, somebody that comments today on my show was like, I was part of a wedding party and one of the groomsmen, one of the groomsmen was late to the wedding because he was busy watching the Vikings play the Bears. But he's a Chargers fan. He has no he has no rooting interest in either of those things. So for me, I feel like it's fair to watch your favorite team play. But I think if you're watching just a random sporting event, you're kind of the sports guy. If you have action on the game, I think it's okay. I think you can you can get away you can with action it. on a lot of games. Yeah, but I mean, first of all, there should have been a wedding during football season. It's not. There should not be a wedding bas- during football bas- season bas- or during March Madness. I mean, I was watching yeah, a basketball still. game. Yeah, but still, there's prime games on that are on Saturday. You got to do it. You got to be. What, you got to be. When are you supposed to get married, then, Will? I would say the best time, man, probably mid to late April. Any time in May. Uh, June, July, and early August. I think that's the best. Summer, summer weddings, summer weddings only. When everybody else wants to get married in venue, <laughs> tickets are through the roof. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's just how it goes. Gotta or you know, you could do it the first. Uh, this isn't a bad time, I guess. Late January. It's not. You know, it's slower. There was only you know two games with the NFC and AFC title games, but no, like if there's like the fall. Okay, I guess that sounds selfish. Don't do it in the fall. Absolutely not. September no through Saturday December, weddings. no, no fall wedding or November, whatever, whenever it ends. I don't know when the seasons end. Um, I mean, you guys have to agree. Like, you would want, like, you would go if we all had to go. Obviously, yeah, you're gonna have to, you know, not up and go. But 
I don't, I would hate for it to be scheduled like in September. That would suck. It would suck in October and it would suck in November. Yeah, no, not in the, no, not in fall. Not so in fall. out of my, out of my college friends, f- four have now gotten married. Three of them have gotten married on a day of a significant TCU sporting event. And one of them planned his wedding around the TCU bye week. And that one friend that planned his wedding on a TCU bye week doesn't even like sports. Well, that guy people. understand. He understood the assignment, yeah, dude. He yeah. gets it. Guy knows that's ball, good. even though he that's doesn't good. know ball. And all the other team. That's right. This guy helped out the ball club right there. Absolutely. As, as, a per, as opposed to... Now... It's tough when, like, college baseball is super regional. I mean, how are you supposed to know, like, that was going to be the day that TCU plays a home game, college baseball super regional? That's kind of tough. That was one of my buddy's like weddings. You're just reaching there. That's a, that's, <laughs> trying to find things that's a tough, that. that's a tough, that's not on him. That's not on him. But, no. I mean, we were watching it. I went to the game the day before. It was a TCU-West Virginia football game in a season we sucked. So, who that's cares? A that's a wash. Uh, super regional game against uh, Indiana State to go to the College World Series. That's not plan. You can't plan that. No. And then the other one was the TCU-Baylor game. Again, it's not really... When you plan these weddings, though, it's like you don't... It's planned so far in advance, you know, that you can't really do that. You can't, like, plan ahead for that. No fall and no middle of March weddings. That's it. Okay. You do it so any other time of the year. Not during the Masters weekend. Okay, April. we have a lot of rules here. When are people supposed to get married? May through any time of the year year. that's not (laughs) September through November in the middle of March. That's fine. Let let me ask you this. This is this happened later at the wedding. I was not a part of this, but a lot of my college friends are big WWE fans. You know what happened? You know what was going on on Saturday in the WWE? That was like the Vince McMahon. Well, no, thing, not right? well. That that was a side. That was that's a yeah, side. Yeah, Vince issue McMahon they, had himself a weekend. That yeah. was a side issue that they discussed. That I kind of was like, okay, I understand. But do we know what happened this weekend at the WWE? Actually, in a ring, it was a big pay per view event. Do either of you know? I think I glossed over. It. I don't know. If I say the year. Royal Rumble, do you even know what that is? Yeah, yeah. I'm it's not paying Royal, attention to the it. The Royal Rumble was going on, so. We're now like last two hours of the wedding. So when you're supposed to be dancing and you're mingling, get the dessert out there, you know, get some more cocktails flowing. There's about six of them watching the end of the Royal Rumble on their phone. Is that justified? Well, I mean, the weddings are uh, going no, are no, that's there. No, you, you can do no. the four major, four major in college. Other than that, no. But I think it's important to talk about how diehard these these roommates and buddies are about the WWE, right? I mean, they're I treating so. that like it's their NBA. It sounds like they're there. living and dying by wrestling. Like that, that's they, what they, it they're like. into it, dude. Like it's a soap opera. I tell you what, I remember I remember coming back from I used to do Monday night classes because like working for TCU's football team, like Mondays there was no practice, so they could get mon- like night classes in for some of the student athletes. Um, so I had a Monday night class every year and I'd come home in the fall and like in central time, dude, like, you know, if I was going to a night class and on the West coast, it would be, it'd be missing Monday night football. But in the central time, like it's not even halftime by the time you're done with your class, at like eight o'clock, I'd come home wanting to throw on Monday night football. And it'd be like Monday night raw. And I'd be like, what is, what is this? And they were like living and die on every storyline. Like the song would come, out, oh my god, it's Roman Reigns! Oh my god! I'm like, what is happening? It would be like eight Roman Reigns at my is house. The man. He, he's a stud. He's a I stud, couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I'd just be like, what? What is going on? The night classes. That's really nostalgic. Going, taking What's the 7:30, 8 p.m. class. You know, or a lab. I think it was a where... six. I had a 6 p.m. Uh, Monday night class like every semester. Yeah, yeah. So you would do anything you could to just not have a Friday class. Like that was the ideal. Like you would, you would, you know, overload Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, even, and that way Friday you were completely off. I remember having like a lab on a Friday, and it was like the worst because it was at like two o'clock, and everyone, like the the entire campus is empty. You don't want to be there. I didn't show up half the time anyway, so it didn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> well. We do want to talk about the uh, the NFL weekend too. I mean, 
you were here in America's finest city, Will. Uh, aside from your weekend, what what, uh, what what stood out to you at the uh, AFC and NFC championship games? It was pretty good games there uh, between uh, Kansas City and Baltimore and San Francisco and Detroit. I mean, if we go chronologically, obviously the the runaway uh, Mahomes. I mean, was it not that Mahomes is going back again with this? You know, debacle of a team. You know, even up until Christmas, you're like, why would you? Why would we even consider this team to go to the Super Bowl? And then you counter that with just a complete dud. I mean, just a complete, you know what, the bed with Lamar. And I think that really kind of took away. I mean, I'm really upset because I lost a significant amount of money because I was so confident in the Ravens, and that really hurt. Just seeing those first two drives, Mahomes just driving down the field and really sticking it to them. And I think you can really tell for these teams that go on runs, you know, to the Super Bowl and eventually win it. They set the tone within the first two, three series of the game. And at that point I was like, I don't think Baltimore's winning this game. You know, even with the home field advantage, the Terrell Suggs coming out. I mean, that was, if we just stay in this game, was, was there any bigger ones than that? I mean, we can make fun of Zay Flowers for the taunting role and everything and being undisciplined, but no, I think those just always revolves around the quarterbacks and, you know, we have to deal with more Mahomes hoopla for the next two weeks. And Lamar has to, you know, for the next eight, nine months, really dwell on a really bad performance. I mean, I think a lot of America was so confident in him, you know, in taking this team. And I even think this was a better team than when he won his first MVP. It's presumed he's going to win the second one, you know, in a couple of weeks. But I don't know. I mean, were you surprised by the outcome? I can't say I am. Um Anytime Patrick Mahomes is playing, I don't care who he's playing, I'm going to take him. Um, just because of his talent, his ability to make things happen. And it seems like he always just raises the level of who's ever around him, right? doesn't matter if he's throwing a Tyree Kill, if he's throwing to Rasheed Rice, and, you know, a whole other cast of characters. They always seem to be playing their best when they're playing with 15, right? So, I also agree, Will, it kind of came out in, like, the first first series or so when the, when the Chiefs let the Ravens take the ball and then they go three and out and the Chiefs go right down the field and they score and they look like the Chiefs that we've seen for the last five years or so. And then they answered back and then they answered back and then as soon as it was, like, 14-7, it was like, all right, this game is probably over. You know, um, and then you also look at how the Chiefs won in the second half because they didn't score any points, right, in the second half. I mean, it was run game, ball control, and play standout smash mouth, you know, play against that Ravens offense, right? Whether it be hitting Lamar on that strip sack or that punch out on Flowers, you know, um, that's kind of who the Chiefs have been this year, and that's 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 the type of teams that have good success in the playoffs. It's a defense that can go on the road, and it's a run game that can go up against even the best you know front seven in the league, arguably with the Ravens. Finally got on Instagram, by the way. I don't know how I screwed that up, but I it took me forever to try to. You have, I guess you have to put the, <laughs> false start going dude, I, I mean, I, I was sitting there going like, it's not working and I know it's not working because I haven't seen on anything. And I was like, well, maybe I got to do, redo the stream thing again. So everybody that just tuned in on Instagram, thanks again for tuning in on Instagram. We're going to be doing this each and every Tuesday at about six o'clock <laughs> talking sports, talking live. You missed a great segment on donkeys handing out beers and wedding uh, receptions and what? I can't wait to see the pictures. The picture of me and a and yeah. a fucking mule that's yeah. giving away beer. Yeah, yeah. that's yes, you know, that's what we yeah. want. That's gonna be great. That's gonna. I be wish great you were. Content. I wish you were. I wish you would have wrote it. That would have been. I'm not just riding ideal. a mule. I'm not riding a mule. You know, that would have been the funniest thing. Braden, Braden, I think we found your first picture on Hinge. You oh wow, mule. me with I didn't take any solos with the beer that's mule. Fine. So for anybody that just, again, tuned in on Instagram, there was a <laughs> mule, a donkey, a literal ass. Around, a, an ass walking around with a saddle and on either side of the saddle, two big crates 
of just light beer in bottles. Like I said before, some Diet Millers, some Coors Lights, some Miller, uh, some Budweisers, Michelob's, you you name it. It was on the side of a donkey, and <laughs> it's like a cart <laughs> girl in golf. Yeah, but it was a mule. But make it pick. Yeah, I, I apparently I the Arizona cool thing. Everybody was wearing cowboy hats. I don't know. The groom wore a cowboy's hat. I don't know where. I don't know why the groomsmen didn't get to wear a cowboy hat. I had to wear a bolo tie. I got a bolo tie. That like was Philip Rivers. Rivers. Phil I, Rivers. I, I channel my inner Philip Rivers with the bolo, yes. with the uh, with the yes. bolo tie. I think I I think I pulled it off. Good for you. Uh, but to get back to, I just wanted to kind of reset for everybody. To, I finally got it to work on Instagram, so that should not be a problem next week. Thanks again for everybody that's tuning on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, I see a lot of you guys commenting on there as well. Yes, Keen, big TCU win today against Lubbock and uh, the Red Raiders. Our boy Ron Davis talking about the Ravens. Lamar lost their composure. I'm going to show the comments here. Lions did the same, unfortunately, against two teams that have been there. It won't do that. Bummer. Here's where I got to say about the, the games this weekend. I felt like the games this weekend were won by teams that have had experience playing in these games. More 100%. so than just talent. I mean, the Niners have been there. They've done that before. Enough of the players on the Niners have been in big games. They know how to win those games. For the Lions, again, as you pointed out, before the game started, you thought that this Lions-Niners game was going to be the NLCS between the Padres and the Phillies. That's exactly what it turned out to be. Lions punched them punch in the mouth, probably a little bit more than the Padres did against the Phillies. And then, you know, the team that was had experience playing in big-time series ended up taking control. I think that was a major factor. I think you could say that both quarterbacks didn't win their teams the game. I think both defenses won the game at the end of the day. Brock Purdy did what he needed to do to win, didn't turn the ball over. Um, he got the, the benefit of the Iuke insane play and you knew it was lucky because they kept asking they asked they asked Ayuk about that play twice in the post game and he didn't say anything about it both times he just talked around it because he knew it was just such a crap shoot of a of a play but he made, made it them. but he made it he made the play that's what was so impressive and that swung and then it, it's just you gotta feel for Lions fans I mean they if they're gone so much and that's why I was kind of rooting for Detroit in this you know try not to be like you know biased or anything or the fans but like their fan base reminds me of the Padres, right? Like the Padres Very much were so. so shitty for so many years. And we just stuck by them and made jokes and would go to the promo nights and go and try to have fun. And then they, you know, they get a new coach and they make fun of Dan Campbell three years ago. Then they, they get the Jared Goff trade and they get all these players. And it's like, and the fact that, and it almost feels like the Padres, like you said, they, they get a 17 point lead. I mean, they take a 17 point lead and, they just squander it. And it's like, they're going to go into this off season just thinking we could have done this. We could, uh, can you imagine like if the 49ers win and it's like, if you're a lions fan, you're like, we, we could have won the super bowl, you know, like that's, well, if they're but, anything like, if they're anything like the Padres and absolutely, that's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to be like, Oh, we're just, you know, one swing away, one, one kind of play away. It. The thing with the lions is they couldn't, I mean, you got to give the Niners credit that game. I don't want to, the the I don't want I don't want to trigger the guy in front of me right now. We're on the Cowboys shirt, but that game was playing out like the Packers and the Cowboys, right? Packers were the <laughs> underdog. They were using the running game. They were they were taking it to the Cowboys. Niners looked so lost and, like, were dazed and confused, getting punched in the mouth. And then, mm -hmm. you know, they hold them to a field goal. I thought, you know, my dad said this while we were watching the game, and it's so true. At the end of the first half, if the Lions scored a touchdown to go into halftime, that was the game. The game was going to be over. Yeah, but the fact they that had they had all the momentum, goal, they had a chance. I mean, it's like you hold yeah. a field goal, you have it. You're still a lot, you still have a chance, but you need the Niners' defense to figure it out and start stepping up, and that's what they did. That's just something the Cowboys' defense didn't do against the Packers that the Niners' defense did against the Lions. I thought that what the Niners did against the Lions, I thought the Cowboys were going to do against the Packers. I literally thought that was that's how it was going to play, and the better team was going to come back with all the weapons that the Niners have. They were able to, you know put some drives together, score, you know, take advantage of the mistakes from Detroit. Remember, they fumbled in their own territory early. They had two fourth down drops. Two fourth down drops, which I don't, I'm not opposed to the fourth down, going for a fourth down there. Um, you got to convert. You live and die with, they lived in, they live and die with the fourth down all year. You got to keep going. And that's how they got there though. I respect the, Dan. Like the biggest, you, the biggest you, problem I had, the biggest problem I had with Dan's decision-making was 
Look, you're down 10 with under two minutes to go. You got three timeouts. You got three pops. You got four pops at the end zone if you want it. But to run the ball on third down, which wasn't a guarantee, and all you, the risk is if you get tackled, you're going to have to call a timeout, which basically means you have to onside kick. I mean, that was the game, and I know they were really good at running the ball, but that that killed them. You had, you had to take another pop at the end zone via pass, and at, at the very worst... You know, if if they don't complete it, at least the clock stops. And they kick a field goal and go, you could still kick it deep because you had three timeouts. It would be a lot more difficult. Or maybe you score on third down or fourth down, you know, via a touchdown. And you keep the three timeouts. At least it sets it up where you don't need an onside kick, which is absolutely impossible in the National Football League now. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a, it's a low success rate. I had a larger issue with their first fourth down try i guess i mean they were up 14 and if you hit that field goal you're up three scores was that the, the one where half. is that the one where goff threw it in the dirt it was the to, one yeah, yeah. i, I don't know that was I, the one that was a little bit right of reynolds I the, think. the thing was though with detroit and he dropped like, it yeah he dropped their it. their kickers all year like north of 40 yards were very inconsistent well, shit, and not it's one out of two and not a guarantee but, it, but even if he hits one and not both of them. Forty-eight yards, right here, hash, so different game. pressure situation. It's not a guarantee. But so, I think you're better. So then, I think you're better off converting a fourth down than you are trusting a kicker. So then, why is he going after Reynolds too? What, where was St. Brown or Laporta? Or why didn't you split out Gibbs? Why are you going to the third or fourth option on that play? I understand maybe you know Laporta or St. Brown was double covered. I didn't go back and watch the film, but wouldn't you say to go to the Super Bowl, you want to target? your best player like you like in that moment like i understand scheme take what the defense gives you you gotta design ben johnson who's gonna come back you know i think that was reported earlier he's not gonna go take the washington job he's asking how do you not dial that up i mean uh but purdy made the plays if you flip it back to the other side he did it against the packers i mean you could conceivably say that the 49ers should have lost the last two weeks but they found ways to win Good teams find ways to win, and, and it doesn't matter how ugly it is. It doesn't matter if there's style points. Can you get it done? And he did. Well, the Niners did. I mean, against the against the Packers, it was a lot of checkdowns to Christian McCaffrey. He put the team on his back. Uh, pretty made some good throws late in the game against Detroit. But I said it today. Here, here's my thing on Brock Purdy. He he is a he's a serviceable quarterback. But he's not the second coming of Christ. He's he's just not. I mean, there's he's not nothing. Maybe Joe Montana. No, he's not. He's not that. He's not. You know, Tom Brady. He's not part of that Mahomes. elite class. And they're really. We've talked about this before, but the reality is the great era of quarterbacks has ended, and now you're in this new era where there's not as many. Like, you got guys like Brady and Manning and Breeze and Rivers and you know Roethlisberger you know, even even got yeah, Roethlisberger I mean guys like Tony Romo could be a guy that could that could help a team and win on a big contract right these are all guys that won as rookies and won on every contract that they've had and made long runs into the post made made runs in the postseason for their team nowadays it's like you better have a rook, you better have a quarterback on a rookie deal Otherwise, everything's going to go south, with the exception of, right now, Patrick Mahomes, who passed the rookie test. Mm -hmm. He has gotten to the Super Bowl again for a second time, not on a rookie contract. And he has done it without Tyreek Hill, and he's done it without some of the weapons that he had at the beginning part of his career. Does he still have Travis Kelsey? Yes. You know, Rasheed Rice is doing a pretty good job, and Isaiah Pacheco running the rock is very good for Kansas City. That's the three-headed monster for the Chiefs. Like, So it's not like he doesn't have weapons. But he doesn't have the same as he did when he first started in the league because they had more money to spend on other players because they were paying him a rookie deal. He's passed the rookie test. It's the same thing like with Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco wins a Super Bowl with Baltimore. Elite. Elite. On a rookie contract. Thank you, Will. And everybody says he's this elite quarterback. And they make him the highest paid quarterback in the National Football League. And then what happens to the Ravens? They go into the tank. I mean, they, they, they're they no longer a threat to win anymore. So you look at some of these teams that have paid rookie quarterbacks big money. I think Dak Prescott's good enough 
to to pass and beat the rookie test. I I do. Um, you know, he's, he's sure about he, that. That's right, I do. Brandon. He's not. He's not sure terrible. About that. I I mean, I don't. I don't ride ride his coattails like this guy does. But I will say he's good. <laughs> he's he's good enough to to win at a high level. I I don't think he hasn't. He, he never they, has. I'm they, sorry. They, I'm sorry. He, he he's put together like 13 to win season. I mean, he's it's not his fault. I mean, the Cowboys defense blew that. You game. could say the same thing about Lamar. He hasn't got you gotta get you gotta get to the championship game. Lamar like, Jackson did not do anything in their last game. I mean, he had now, granted, he had nothing <clears> open. I mean, Spagnola had everything covered all over the place. I mean, but and, and you can get the argument. Flowers and he starts taunting. He's got, he's got Zay Flowers. <laughs> like, that's really it. I mean, Mark Andrews he is Odell hobbled. The guy wanted, he sucks, the dude. Guy he's get out of here. Oh, Odell Beckham. He sat out all last washed. year for this moment. He's, he's washed. Back. He's Free washed. Odell. Free he's Odell. Not. Guy went on a boat one time. Has never been the same guy since. The, the boat picture is still just amazing. Like, that, that's still brought up anytime I think the Giants washed. are going to go to the Super Bowl. Washed. Um, but no. He, like, I, he, he, the, Brock, he so let me, in the Rams Super Bowl, let me right? ask you this. If the 49ers could get Matt Stafford today, no questions asked, and have him ready to play in the Super Bowl and flip it with Brock Purdy, do they do that? Yeah. Absolutely they do. I Does bet get you the- I bet you they probably say yes to about 15, maybe 20 quarterbacks in the league that they could switch with right now with Brock Purdy, and they would do it. So does he get to bring Kelly Stafford, who was bitching at Blueface, and now if he's in San Francisco, he's gonna do it with E forty. Does she does she get to come too? Yes. Yes, I guess. <laughs> but okay, but in that scenario, yeah, to answer your question though, yes, he he would do it. Like, but wouldn't like, you say if, C, if CJ Stroud's on the Niners, are they better? You They're better. Any, They're that better. Your question though, like there's there's probably ten guys that probably couldn't get it done in the 49ers. Like Trey Lance is one of them. I was gonna say in in the 49ers system. He's a backup quarterback. He's a backup quarterback. All all Brock Purdy is a system quarterback, but all Brock Purdy has to do is not turn the ball over. And he does it for him. They make it. No, he he does. I mean, against Green Bay, he should have thrown three picks, and Green Bay just flat should've, out dropped it. Should have, could have, would have. Well, he, he should have thrown a pick against. But the he didn't. Right? Exactly, you just flat I mean, out dropped it. He might I mean, be it's the luckiest not, quarterback. Exactly. You can't say like if he throws the ball right to the other team and he drops it, is he? Oh, he's just good. Like he's he's so good. <laughs> that the that Packers happen. guy dropped the ball. I mean, yeah. he's not making good. He throws. didn't catch the ball. He, That's not a recorded interception. He does not make good throws. I mean, eventually it's going to burn him, just like Jordan Love. Yes. Jordan Love against the Cowboys made a bunch of stupid throws that should have been picked, and he got rewarded for it. And then what did the media do? The media said, this guy is great. He's the future. He's better than Aaron Rodgers. This is they the great. Found this, they found their next Hall quarterback. And then what happens against <laughs> San Francisco? He makes the same damn throws, and they go right to a – 49er and it's a pick and now the thing's like well maybe he can't play quarterback maybe he's not the answer for them in Green Bay it's like it's the narrative is so dumb it's like you have a good season you're a great quarterback you have a bad season get this guy to leave it's the same thing with Lamar every year Lamar every uh, all of Lamar's good years all of his good years MVP we've never seen a quarterback like him he can throw he can run and then he has a bad year or he goes to the playoffs you know what? I think it's time for the Ravens to move on from Lamar. He's not that great. Stop trying to sell these guys as the second coming of the greatest quarterback to ever live every time they have some success. That's why I'm so critical about quarterbacks. I mean, Brock Purdy has done a great job for San Francisco. But let me ask you this. If you have to pay him the most amount of money on the team, are the Niners still as dominant as they are? No, it's the same They're thing not. as every team in the league outside of What Kansas if he City. gets okay. outside of K- because outside of Patrick Kansas Mahomes City. is at that level with Tom Brady and Peyton Manning all that and all of those great quarterbacks, they can win with him getting a lot of money because he could carry a team. Well, so I was just doing some backtracking in my head, right? Last year's Super Bowl, Mahomes against a quarterback on a rookie deal, Jalen Hurts, right? Year before that, Matt Stafford versus a quarterback on a rookie deal, Joe Burrow. 2020, a little different. Mahomes and Brady. 
That's the definition of its own. Those are two. Class. Those are right. two great quarterbacks. Twenty nineteen, Mahomes and Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, I don't think he was on a rookie deal, but he wasn't making. He wasn't a top 30, notch 40 quarterback. Forty million dollars. No. He was winning. They were winning despite him. I mean, that's just the kind of you know I, the way that you have to follow unless you have a guy like you know Pat Mahomes that can carry you there year after year. You got to strike gold on a rookie deal and build a good enough team around them in that two to three year stretch until they start asking for their money. That's why right now the chargers are host because now they got to start paying Herbert a ton of money. They're in cap hell. The Eagles are in trouble too, because Jalen hurts is not one of those quarterbacks. He cannot carry a team. No, he's he, he, he can run the ball. Does a good job with the, with the push. He's got great weapons and nobody talked about the fact that they had arguably the best offensive line in all all of the oh, NFL. Yeah. I mean, one of the best I mean, in the all of the NFL. Center. If you put Justin Fields on the Eagles, they probably do a lot of great things. They probably do. It's the same quarterback. It's, it's true. <laughs> they probably do a lot of the great things. So it leads to kind of our last topic of the day. I, I, there's other things we want to get into. I spent too much time on the wedding. But I will say, you know, I don't hate Brock Purdy. I don't hate Brock Purdy. It's criticism about the quarterback, but I don't hate Brock Purdy. And the other thing I think is very prominent now in the media is if you say anything critical about any player, organization, team, you know, anything negative about politics, you know, you go through the list of just different kind of talking, right? The discussions where you use criticism. You can talk about the, the TSA pre-check line at an airport and you have some best. criticisms on it. Absolutely. The one I'll tell you, the Phoenix dude. Phoenix was a joke. I don't know. They had one lane open for security on my way back. Yeah, it sucks. That, they're one of the worst insane. ones. But there's only like five people. By the way, it, so it's okay. Who names an airport Sky Harbor? That is the lamest name I've ever heard for an airport. But I, I, I digress. <laughs> so tell us how you really feel. <laughs> it's they stupid. Need it's a stupid. Around. It's a stupid name. So nowadays, it seems like if you are critical about something, you immediately get deemed a hater. Is there a difference between being critical and being a hater? I could be critical about Brock Purdy. That doesn't mean I hate the guy. And the question always is, why does everybody hate Brock Purdy? Right? That seems to be the question, right? Why does everybody hate Brock Purdy? I don't think anybody hates Brock Purdy. I might. I don't hate Brock Purdy. There's nothing to hate. What do you hate about Brock Purdy? Aside from the fact that he wears a Niners uniform and you're a Cowboys fan. Well, that's exactly it. I mean, there's no reason to hate Brock Purdy. I don't hate Brock Purdy. I don't think, he he's, that great of, I don't think he's that great of a quarterback. He's okay. He I wins. He, what does that mean? His team wins. They He's a built part their, of the team. They, he, he doesn't win the games for San Francisco. San Francisco wins the games with Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy ain't winning the games for the San Francisco 49ers. Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey are winning games for the San Francisco 49ers. I mean, it well, ain't Brock Purdy. Well, we can make the same argument about Herbert and the Chargers. Now, Herbert yeah, I mean, doesn't win. Right. He's he not a good win. quarterback. He's, he doesn't win. And he's going to as soon as Jim Harbaugh gets there. Uh, oh, my God. Here we go. <laughs> we haven't seen it yet. No, I just. Here we you go. Know, Lamar, but I don't, again, I don't, I don't hate Lamar. You're either. not a hater. You can You're be not critical. A hater. You're critical. Yeah. I'm not a hater. It's just. It's, and these people here's are the not pro- haters on Brock Purdy. Because here's the problem with media now. It just turns into like a screaming match. Hot so take. it just, it, it feels like media. everyone, everyone does. Come on. Like, it doesn't matter whatever big network it is. But he wins. Like, that's fine. the biggest thing. And he's in the Super Bowl. There's, like, a fine line of being a hater and, you know, trying to give some gentle, not backhanded, you know, things to say about somebody. Like, if I say, oh, Brock gets carried by his team, but let's look at these four plays where, you know, he made the right play and pushed the ball downfield and let drives go on. I mean, that's just kind of that fine line of like, hey, I'm not going to hate on the guy and not make it sound like I'm hating on him, but I'm going to give credit like where credit's due. Absolutely. You got to do that. But the problem mm-hmm. is nobody wants to do that. It's got to be one extreme or the other. It's either he's the greatest thing, you know, since I'm, spread I'm, or... I'm a borderline Charger hater, but I'm not like a super hater as much as people <clears throat> think I'm a hater. I'm very critical about like the Charger, especially if they left, right? I can say a lot of different things about how poor they're their organization is how dumb they how dumb moves they make but that being said i flat out go on air and say all the time like oh jim harbaugh is a good sign for them 
They might find a way to screw it up, but it was a good signing for him. I mean, yeah. that's a good hiring for a head coach. I think Justin Herbert is a, I think he's capable of being a top five quarterback in the National Football League. I really do. He hasn't yeah. played that so far because he doesn't have a lot around him. But that being said, like for everything that I, I even picked him to go to the AFC Championship game this year, I thought they could finally get over the hump because their roster is really good. So there is some, you, you got to be able to throw out some positivity or, or, or say things when they do well, as you were saying, as much as being critical, just to be, be real about it. I mean, I like being real about it. I'm, I'm a, as, as one of my former high school football coaches used to say, coach Mack from Texas, he's like, man, I'm a fair guy. I'm a fair, I'm, I try to be as fair as possible on, on certain topics like this, but just because for for a small brief of time I'm criticizing how something is run or how something is operated doesn't make me a hater as much as everybody wants to make you seem like you're a hater. It's because everyone's soft now, and if you're not I completely agree. just sucking them off, then everyone's like, "Oh, then you hate him. He's not that good." And then you hate give him, him his flowers when he when he deserves it. And look, if the Chiefs win, we will not hear the end. Of, well, we won't hear the end of the Swift proposal with you know travis kelsey and mahomes but once that dies we will not hear the end of the purdy you know being the guy like and and that's gonna happen and that's that just comes with playing that position playing for that team playing with you know they have a bunch of stars it's a great team it's a great run organization from the front office down they do it the right way and that's why they have the amount of success they've had you know in the last what half decade up until now and they could potentially win another title so I just if the Niners don't win, it's going to be I think because of Brock Purdy, and I think they're going to have to make a serious decision of how many times they could get as far as they can with not addressing the quarterback position. Because they got it, the best, they got the best running back in the league. They got the best offensive weapon in the league in Debo Samuel. They got the best left tackle in the league. They got a really good tight end. I mean, they're loaded on good defense. wide receiver. They got a good front seven. I mean, their secondary is a little suspect, but got an all pro corner. O- overall, good on defense though. Like Detroit took it to him. Like if that their if defense if, got exposed a couple of times, yeah. they were the entire I, year. I, I thought they were better than what they showed against Detroit. But on paper, they look amazing. Their front seven they, is not bad, but their they their, are, sec, their secondary is not good. Their secondary is not good. But that being said, they decided to not invest in a quarterback and spend all their money elsewhere and roll the dice with a quarterback that's just going to manage the game. And that's exactly what the Niners do. And we'll see how that plays out because I'm telling you right now, Brock Purdy's not going to outdo Patrick Mahomes. They're going to have to find a way to deal with the three-headed monster of Pacheco. You got to get your dig in there, you Rice, get the dig in. <laughs> and Kelsey. And you can't double team anybody either because that's that's also foolish. But we'll talk more about the Super Bowl next week. They want to dive into that, you know, kind of hater topic as well. Um, you know, we're kind of running out of time. It's a big week for college basketball. Big win for the Frogs tonight. How, how are the Aztecs doing? Uh, currently 53 or down 53 to 45 has not looked good. Um, how much time's left? Most of the game, uh, 12, 27 left. In the second. Plenty of time, plenty of time, of time, plenty of time. Go steal one from Colorado state. Will. no, I wanted to, I mean, they were down 17, four at one point. So it's Mountain West is tough, man. They're going to get, I, I mean, say. there's talks that there could be up to five bids that goes to the tournament. If you, you know, look so. at Lenardi's last bracketology, how about this? How about, how about this? There is a possibility, Will. Listen to what I have to say. There is a possibility, especially you, Pac-2 guy. There is a possibility the Mountain West gets more bids to the NCAA tournament than the ACC and the Pac-12 combined. Good. Could you, Good. I mean, what if I told you that 10 years ago, you wouldn't even believe me. No. Yeah, no. Cause They're only going to get was... five, though, because like the sixth team right now is Colorado State, unless they knock off the Aztecs here and, and kind of go on a run, which I guess they're capable of doing. That, that loss to Wyoming really hurt the um, the sucks. Mountain West chances to get six teams in, but mm-hmm. five teams. I mean, I mean, you're talking about the ACC. You're talking about like conferences of Duke and North Carolina and NC State and Syracuse. Tobacco Road and Syracuse. Um, I mean, you go through the ACC, Virginia, who's been really good in the last you know decade or so. You're talking about a conference that has all those teams only getting three teams in. You're talking about a Pac-12 conference with the likes of. You know, Arizona and UCLA and USC and, um, you know, Arizona State, U- Utah, Washington, Oregon. Cougs are playing good basketball. I got to try to try to save the Pac-2 conference. 
by getting into the tournament. Maybe that's another conference where they get maybe three, two to three teams in the NCAA tournament. And the and the Aztecs and the Mountain West are gonna get five. I think the Aztecs are still the best team in the Mountain West Conference. I had somebody say that they're not. I I I disagree. I I know North Carolina, by the way, was upset tonight. Shout out to EC Preps. I had to double check that. That's great. They lost to Georgia Tech. No, it's uh, it's it's good, right? It's good for the mid majors. You know what? Screw nil, and that's a separate conversation. That has, a, a, I feel like, a little bit to do with these, you know, powerhouse teams. It's it's they don't. I don't know. That's I'm not going to get into that. I want to get in the weeds, but. I mean, to be on the West Coast, this is good, right? Get some good exposure. Because everyone's going to say, oh, this is a boring tournament. No, everyone's going to watch still. It's 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 not quite the Super Bowl in terms of, you know, that spectacle. But it's to have that many teams, I mean, that's solid. You know, the Big 12 has done that in the years past, you know. They might get like 10 teams in. Well, it already had the chance. They, I mean, they got like nine in right now, and they have two on the bubble that might sneak in with 11. 11 of the 14 teams in the Big 12. And they're only going to get better next year. And they're, they're going to get better conference. with Arizona. The conference is ridiculous, dude. I, it's insane. The report, by the way, the report from Dennis Dodd three months ago about San Diego State telling Brett Yormark in the Big 12, thanks but no thanks, is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. It's the most San Diego State thing. That is the most heard. Aztec thing I've ever heard in my life. I mean, think about that, Will. They said, thanks but we got a potential opportunity to join the Pac-12, and they're sticking together. Are you kidding me? Think about this conference. Think about all the games we just talked about, the Big 12. Think about mm. San Diego State. Could you imagine tonight, after watching TCU knock off Texas Tech, the nightcap on ESPN2 is San Diego State playing host to the Kansas Jayhawks at the VA, at VA House. It would be amazing. It and would then, be amazing. And then, and then Saturday, the Aztecs, have to tip off against Arizona at the McHale Arizona. Center. And then next Tuesday, they got to go to Lubbock to take on Texas Tech. And then they got West then, Virginia coming to VA House on Saturday. And then Baylor two weeks later. No, I mean, for a basketball perspective, yes, the Big 12, would that would be awesome if, if State was in it. Um, football took a dip. You know, I don't think it would. Like, They're going to be good, dude. They're going to be good. I don't. No, but like the, the shine of the Big 12 with Texas and OU leaving – I mean, yeah, okay, it's fine. Cincinnati, okay, like you know, UCF, all right. It doesn't have that 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 you know pageantry that to it having those big teams. But just sticking with basketball, yes, I mean that that is a powerhouse conference. It's awesome. I think I might have lost the audio. Know, year after year with all the money and whatnot. I should have the uh, audio back now. Oh, there we go. I thought I was going crazy. No, I had to, had to reset it. Then I have to get this like studio <laughs> thing on there. So I got to like find Matt and put him on here. And it's, uh, it's kind of a pain, but you know, it is what it is. I was yeah, pontificating yeah. about the depth of the, uh, the big 12 basketball. And no, I mean, I, don't, I couldn't really hear what Matt was saying, but yeah, no, just to put a bow on that, like that was, it's a, you guys are deep. It's awesome. 
you know, it's going to be another fun March. You know, I you don't know if, you know, state still. Yeah, I heard you right before we cut out. You know, people are arguing, are they the best? You know, in the Mountain West is New Mexico going to make an SDSU run in the in the tournament like last year? Um, you know, Boise, you know, whatever. I just overall as a fan, you got to enjoy it. I mean, this is it, it's a good time to be a part of this conference, although, I, you know, I still hate it a lot. And I hate, you know, the TV deals and the times and, you know, some of the opponents. But, you know, this is I think it's going to be it'll be solid. I think it's going to be a really fun March. I'm looking forward to it as well. Um, sorry about that with the uh, kind of technical difficulty. My laptop like just buffered too long and then I had to reset the audio and audio runs through my laptop. But I think we're back up and running. It should be a fun year of college basketball. Uh, we have a little bit of time left. Uh, I do want to dive into the uh, the Padres real quick. Um, did you see Dennis Lynn's survey, his fan survey <laughs> on the pod? Did you fill that thing out? I mean, that was... I don't have an athletics... Uh... Thing, so oh I man, you gotta get an athletic. <laughs> I got it's a tax write off. Say it's in your business, you know. <laughs> Come on. Um, so he put out a a survey. He does it every year. It's like how confident are you in the Padres, like and all that sort of stuff, and like how excited for the season. So I will I'll, let me ask you some of the questions. What is your confidence level in the Padres and the future of the Padres? Not confident, somewhat confident, or no, not confident. Uh, uh, somewhat confident or uh, super confident? I'll go somewhat. I'll, I'll split the difference. Um, I mean, right now, just on paper, you know, lack of pitching. You've seen in the past with, uh, you know, World Series champs, they have tremendous depth, you know, from the rotation to the bullpen. And that is an alarming question, I think, right now. Um, there's also other, you know, factors, you know, with, the Manny injury, you know, I, I believe he's going to come back strong. I think he'll be solid, but I'm not going to hold my breath on him. I don't know, potentially starting opening day. I hope maybe he proves me wrong. Maybe I'm an idiot, and you know, he rolls out and sends you know Pecco into a frenzy. You know, when they announce his name, I just think coming off elbow surgery would be tough. But you know, sliding Kim, thank God we have him. Right, like he's the most versatile infielder we have. So, I mean, just though there's other positional stuff as well. You know, it's Schultz's first year, you know, at, at the helm. So there's, I guess I would say somewhat, you know, it's not a bad team. It's just there's a large amount of holes <laughs> that are on it at every level. And I just, I got, it's, I, it's I got hard the, to I trust real, at this point. I got the real question here. How confident are you that the Padres are heading in the right direction? Very confident, somewhat confident, unsure, not very confident, not confident at all. I would say not very confident right now just because of the uncertainties that the Padres are facing uncertainties with the TV contract uncertainties with the <laughs> payroll uncertainties with the roster. You don't have a complete roster yet. So as of right now, not very confident. Also not knowing, really knowing what the post Peter Seidler San Diego Padres are going to look like. This is the most stagnant off season that, they've had in the last oh, in the five Side, years. Seidler yeah. Preller era. So absolutely. Like, unsure yeah. About Uncertainty. It. It's, it's just like, not, it's, not, it's not normal. It's almost like for a fan base that was so, you know, starved to get some big money and big stars coming. It happened for like a four to five year stretch and it doesn't happen one year and everybody's all up in arms about, Oh my God, are we doing the right thing? I think are it's because right fans, way? I think Padres fans are so afraid to go back to, Oh, totally. What it was. I think totally. a lot of Padres, and they see this and go, here we go again. We're going back to your Padres Padres, where it's like, it's cheap. They're just trying to fill out a roster. Your biggest offseason pickup is Clint Barmas or Seth Smith. And you're Jason, expect Bartlett. Jason Bartlett and <laughs> Orlando Hudson. You know, you're expecting the Padres. Those were the days. Good. As you know, time middle infield. you're sitting there going like, well, you know, if Oscar Salazar has enough at bats, I think he could be a pretty good hitter for the Padres. You know, <laughs> Tommy like, Medica. Yeah, exactly. Like Tommy Medica is the second coming in the minor leagues. You know, you're Carlos really, Suahe. you're just, you're, you're Fortnite dying, legend. you're living and dying in every El Paso, Chihuahua box oh, yeah. score. You know, oh, Jabari Black. Oh, we got them from Oakland on a rule five pickup. Look how great this guy is. He's the next Babe Ruth. That's cool. What's the Aztec I, really, score? not to, not to dwell too much on it, Brian. So I, I pulled up the Dennis Lynn survey. So at the last one, at the bottom, not confident at all. Nine percent of the vote came in. I guess my question for that, for the people that answered that, 
are you just saying this? We just fall flat on our face. I mean, do we just no? How how the, confident the are you? The Padres are headed in the right direction. Do you think it's gonna like they're on a clear path to winning a World Series in the next? No, year? I know. I'm just trying to put myself in the perspective of the people, the nine percent that said not confident at all. I mean, there there is some stuff to work with here. Well, it's probably and I understand the skepticism, but you know, it would be like you know they're never gonna get rid of Preller. He's proven that he can't get the job done at the major league level. They're gonna continue to cut money. You know the old, the players that they have under contract are getting older. They got bad money deals. Maybe they'll do a fire. So, I mean that that would be like my thought process of not confident at all. You know the TV not having a TV mm. contract. We can't pay for anybody. You know that <laughs> that kind of con- that kind of <laughs> odd that stuff. I think the TV contract is an overrated topic. I was gonna say I don't think the average fan. It doesn't matter. They don't screw Bally, like, but they don't. Up every day, holy shit, screw that. They don't, they don't understand yet. like what goes into a, like a media contract anyway. Like Will and I have experienced being in the industry, like how some of the stuff works. But the reality, it's like, messy. Padres, the Padres are going to be on TV. Yeah. They're going to find a way to get on TV. Here's the other thing about the Padres. If you're telling me, like, it's either two things. First of all, they're probably working with somebody on something. And the cool thing about it is having your own media rights means you can negotiate with pretty much anybody. So if they really wanted to, they could make their own individual pitch to Amazon or Apple TV Plus or some of these. And I'm doing it very broad. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of legalities in there of what Major League Baseball will and will not allow you to do in terms of showing your product. But the fact that they control their own media rights means that they could go negotiate with anybody. To say that they're not doing that right now would be ridiculous. Or... It'd be incredible, incredibly, you know, incredible organizational malpractice if they were not discussing different ways and avenues to make money off a TV deal. I think they're working on that. It's not really our problem. But it sounds like they're going to start spending money after they reset the CBT, which I highly think is going to happen. I really think they're going to reset the CBT and then go after it again in 2025. Based on some people I've talked to that know the Seidler family, it sounds like business will be going on as usual at the end of this season, and I I totally believe that. I I think and I think you got to I think you got to be patient in the situation, and not look at the tree, look at the forest of the San Diego Padres, and understand why they wouldn't do that. The other thing that we've talked about off air that I got from you know, there's a couple of things that are happening right now, okay, from the agent side of free agency. Scott Boris has told all of his clients we're not signed until February. Okay, we've gotten that word on the street, which I understand the the business side of that if you're Scott Boris. If you're Scott Boris, you tell the big hitters, right, that want to go sign plays, they're going to be taken care of. You're going to tell them don't sign until February, and we're going to let everybody else, we're going to go one by one like a domino and sign our contracts, and then the lower level Boris guys, the middle guys, are going to get panic bought by a lot of teams that got needed to fill out a roster before the start of the season. That's one thing that's happening on top of the fact that the, the, the CBT is happening. Boris clients are waiting until February. And the last thing is, is most organizations understand that this free agent market is not as good as next year's market. I know there was Otani out there, but we, that's like a big, that's a big fish. It's not the depth of the free agent market is not worth the money that people are spending on free agents compared to next year. It would be like in the real estate market, understanding that next year, you know, some people are going to be selling some good houses, a lot better houses and better locations than you currently have available to you for the same price of you buying a house right now and probably a location that is not something that you want. It's like, do I want to live in? Do I want to live in Alpine for ten million dollars, or do I want to live in La Jolla for ten million dollars? The Alpine house is available now. I know the La Jolla house is going to be available later. I'd rather live in La Jolla and kind of suck it up for a year. I'd save my money, maybe spend a little bit more, $10.5 million for the house in La Jolla. Obviously, that's not really realistic in the grand scheme of things, but you understand, I'm, I'm waiting for something better because I know what's going to come on the market in a little bit a little bit later. Yes, I do need players now. right? I do need a place to live right now, but I might rent somebody instead than giving out a big contract in a year that I want to save money in a CBT and in a year where that player is probably not going to put it over the top. It's the same like Cody Bellinger, right? The Padres need an outfield and left-handed hitter and Cody Bellinger would fit the mold. But do I want to overspend for a guy like him? That's not going to necessarily help my team here in 2024 when I can go out in 2025 after I reset the luxury tax and load up on a bunch of free agents. 
Man, I feel like uh, Mark Grant would be a little upset that you choosing uh, I threw Alpine over, on the bus over over his neighborhood. No, you know, you make a good point. Um, and and that's the thing. Um, you know, Padres has been kind of guilty of that in the past too, where they've you know made some questionable decisions with free agency, and it's like, did you really need that? Did, was it worth that that sign? Um, yeah, it should work itself out. Um, you know, and that goes back, you know, it's one of Boris's clients is Snell and it sucks. He's not going to be around, you know, with the team anymore and good for him. He's going to get the bag with, you know, another team and hopefully, you know, he continues his success. And this goes back to the, what you asked originally, Braden, you know, how confident, you know, are you that the Padres are headed in the right direction? That's a, that's a glaring hole. You know, he won this fucking Cy Young like that. How do you replace that? Obviously, another Cy Young winner that goes without saying, but I mean, I don't. That's the biggest thing I'm worried about. Um, you know, there's other some you know positional aspects and you know coaching and whatever. Uh, but I, I, does Musgrove is he the opening day starter? Did we roll out Darvish? I mean, hopefully, he doesn't break his foot again. You know, that sucked or his toe or whatever. It he's was. progressing. He's progressing really well. Yeah, um, you know, so and I wouldn't, I wouldn't Darvish has been about, solid. I just I wouldn't, I, that, I wouldn't worry I about know. I wouldn't worry about him per se. Um, but I I uh, he's I think he's gonna be he's gonna be ready to go. Um, same thing with Darvish; he's progressing really well too. I do want to get to a couple more of these questions because we're running out of time. How does your confidence level in the Padres this year compare to how you felt at this time last year? You're a lot more confident now, a little more confident. Feel about the same. Less confident, a lot less confident. Less confident? I'm way Just less, looking way at the less roster confident. that you're looking at? Oh, way less confident. Absolutely. I, yeah, I'm a lot less confident. I, I, I just, at this time last year, I, you know, I had placed a disgusting amount of money on us to win the World <laughs> Series. And that completely backfired in my face by like May. And it just never seemed to get better. Um, no, there was just hope last year. We had a fucking owner last year. Like that, that there is a there is so many other problems. And I know the players are going to do their best to weather the storm and just handle business on the field because that's the best that they can do and provide a great product for us to enjoy every single night and you know, bitch and moan and, and praise and, and just support them on Twitter, which I love the the, the Padres shout Padres Twitter. They are savages. Um I, I get a kick out of Every one of them, you know, so a lot less confident. Like, so 1.3% said, I'm a lot more confident now. I, I mean, that's probably just trolls. You know, that's the that's Elon's bots that he didn't, you know, filter out correctly that we're being yeah. assholes. One point, um, wait, would you say 1.3% are a lot more confident now? Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be, or people that are just like got their head in the sand. You guys that don't like Juan Soto. Right, he's happy he's gone. Juan Soto's gone. We have Hassan Kim. That's no, the I mean, uh, like the deal. look. This time last year, I they, was I was the most confident dude, ever dude, in the history had, of they San Diego Padres they fandom had last year. Yeah, people at Fan Fest. Fan Fest is wild, dude. Yeah, that was a wild they don't have time. A fan Fest this year. That's all. I know. thought we were going to win 105 games last year. Fans are feeling. I mean, obviously it's not to the fans, but. You beat the Dodgers. You see that there's you, you, you're coming off beating the Dodgers in a playoff series, and then going to the NLCS, and then you sign Xander Bogarts. Regardless of what you think of the contract, you had Xander Bogarts coming right. to town for the yeah. Padres. You were going to the season going, nobody's going to touch us. Well, yeah, like, then we're you're already go looking at the roster or the lineup. Twenty one games in, when you get Fernando back, and you're like, we're going to score nine runs a game. Gavin yeah. Lux tore his ACL in spring training, so you're like, their starting shortstop for the Dodgers took a-, a huge hit. After like, after an off season of the Dodgers, where they're like, we're not going to do anything. We're going to go. They didn't do anything. They didn't do anything. No, because and they 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 were so arrogant about knowing they were they were going to get back to the playoffs with that. I mean, I was like, we're going to stick it to these guys, and then they did it, and then it God, was just was and it was just such a disappointing God, so disappointing season. Where it's like it was almost like a fan fest when they started talking about like the World Series and stuff. I felt like it was LeBron saying, "Not one, not two, not three. And I was like, "At least right, they won I, two. They got two. That's, that's right." But still, it's like that's that's kind of how it felt. Um, you know, going into the season, so naturally you're not going to feel as high as you did last year at this time. So I think that's an obvious, you know, confidence level downturn. Um, how confident are you in AJ Preller? 
very confident, somewhat unsure, not very confident, not confident at all. I mean, it's been, what is he got, 10 seasons under his belt, and he's made it to the NLCS one time. I mean, you can, you can cut him as much slack as possible the first five years while well, he's taking over this team, and yada, yada, yada. But, I mean, how many... How many general managers, again, I'm being critical. I don't hate AJ Preller. I'm not a hater, but I'm being critical. I mean, how many You general hate that managers- he eats Denny's. That's what you hate. I have no <laughs> issue with that. He maybe he maybe should spend more money at uh, Cheesecake Factory, you know, being a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> he could be like Vince Young. Vince just, Young yeah. spending 60K ordering cheesecake. That's cheesecake. Yeah. But how many general managers get the opportunity that AJ Preller has gotten in terms of his leash of like i mean how many how many years Very you're a cowboys few. fan i, I was mean, about aside, to say i was drawing the guys, comparison guys in not, my head guys not what is he jay's he doesn't own the ball club like jerry does but could you imagine i mean it's like what is he jason garrett out there is continue like nice but it's about to get it's gonna get better eventually i would say just to zag while everyone zigs i'll say somewhat confident um i i didn't really like the haul um that we got with juan soto and again, it's back to the 2013 through 19 Padres of prospects that we just glorify them because this is it. This is it. I think, you know, gun to the head, he has to get this done. And if he doesn't perform with, you know, and there's going to be some more signings and there's probably going to be some trades. I hope, you know, in, in like the huge doomsday scenario, you know, the big, you know, Machado or, Tatis. I mean, I'm just talking out of my ass right now, but like something that catastrophic where they would have to lead the team. That's where, you know, I just don't think someone, even though he's had this long of a leash, you, there has to be some sort of urgency. And it's not that, and again, I don't hate AJ Preller either. I don't, I don't like Danny's, but I don't, I don't, I don't mind AJ <laughs> Preller. What's, because what's, what's your, what's your, uh, what's your breakfast, uh, what's your chain breakfast place of choice then? Well, are you an IHOP guy? I, don't just, I get a, get a breakfast burrito. I don't know. I don't I go to what? breakfast places. I don't like, if I had to choose, I don't know. I'd rather go to a diner. A, a diner. Yeah. I Perry's, go to some, I don't know. Look it up on you. Know, Perry, yeah. Perry's, Perry's, Perry's cool. cafe money. Harry's. And if you Perry's, go to, if you go to fucking Denny's do. when you're sober like that, no, there's, there's <laughs> serious flag. problems. I've had too many bad memories. Will just made the F word count for the night. Yep. Yeah. Count it. Yeah. There's the bell. He used it. Yeah, he, used it on, he used it on his roommate's cat last week and he's used it on Denny's this week. Wow. Tell us what you do if you like Denny's. <laughs> I got to make him count. Broad spectrum, uh, last, last, um, last question for you. What do you, what are the, what should the Padres do with Hassan Kim? Negotiate a contract extension before the Ooh. season, before Ooh. he reaches free agency. See how he performs in a contract year and consider moving him at the trade deadline. Trade him before the season starts or enjoy the last season of a team-friendly contract and then let him walk. 41% of people, obviously, because there's big so fans, said negotiate a contract extension. Let me lay out a I'm just going to lay out some real-world scenarios for you. Real world scenarios of, of just let's let's bring everybody back to reality on the Hassan Kim thing. I don't hate Hassan Kim, not a hater. I like Hassan Kim. <laughs> Gotta preface Padres, this. Brock the word of the night, hater. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But not Josh. Um here's the story. Here, here's here's everything you know about Hassan Kim. So Hassan Kim obviously is a fan favorite. People love him because you got to think about it from the marketing standpoint. He is one of, he is the best shortstop that they currently have on the team. Uh, and he has a good asset for the Padres, but he is also one of the last pieces not tied down to the ship that you can toss overboard when you're trying to reset your CBT because he is a luxury that you cannot afford either now or in the future. And he is your only trade asset that is willing that you can willingly part ways with where it makes sense. That's the background. Here's what he's probably going to get in a contract. He is going to get a shortstop contract. He was relatively around the same age as Xander Bogarts was when he signed that big deal with the Padres last year, two years ago. He hasn't accomplished as much as Xander Bogarts, but he is a gold glove caliber fielder at shortstop. He still is relatively young. He has improved tremendously in Major League Baseball since he came over from Korea. And with inflation, he's probably looking at a Xander Bogarts type contract. I mean, some team is going to pay him a large deal like that, about 20 to $25 million a year, to be their everyday shortstop, which is obviously something he would probably rather do than play second base. Are you willing to give Hassan Kim 
a contract that is almost to the point of Xander Bogarts' long contract. You know, paying him till he's 40. I don't think the Padres would do that, but somebody might. Giving him 20 to $25 million a year. Is he worth that kind of money for a team like the San Diego Padres? I think he might be worth that kind of money for any other team that needs a shortstop really bad. But can you take on another contract like that if you're the Padres? So I think you have to think about that before you make your decision on what you do with Hassan Kim. I think you could get something out of him. Mm-hmm. Would you be willing to trade Hassan Kim for a starting outfielder and a starting pitcher? I mean, obviously it wouldn't be an ace, but you could probably get like a four or five out of him and probably a serviceable outfielder or a first baseman. I would say yes to that. I would trade Hassan Kim because I'm not going to be able to afford him in the future. I would pick up, you know, one, let's just say a position player, a starting, a good solid position player, not not necessarily an all-star, but a good solid major league position player, you know, whether it be first base or the outfield. I'd move Cronenworth back to second base because he's locked under contract for a long period of time. And I get a four fifth starter. I mean, that that's kind of with your budget that kind of puts everything together in one simple package instead of just having Hassan Kim play second base, which isn't his natural position because he ain't moving Xander, and you're not going to give the guy $25 million a year. You feel well, like this is the peak of Hassan Kim's value? Trade value? Yeah. Yeah, because I think if you start the season with Hassan Kim, you can't trade him at the deadline. So I just pulled up his fan graphs numbers that he's projected to do for this year yeah average is 260 last year fan graphs has him projected at 247 on base he had a great on base year last year he boosted his walk rate 351 last season and 329 is what they have him at for this year slug going down uh 10 points from 398 to 388 wrc plus going back down to 101 league average at the dish, right? How much how many runs he's gonna be creating. And his war going from four point four to three point three. So they kind of have like a coming back down to earth scenario for Kim. And I think I mean you said it right there, looking at his his money, right? Like you're not gonna pay two guys that Xander Bogart steal for the same age. And, and if you do that right. at the same position, you're going to have to move Xander, which you're not going to do after you signed right. him. And because nobody else is going to sign with you, you're going to be like, they're just going to move me. Right. But like, if I were to pay two guys, right. Nine figure deals in the they're same playing different part positions. of the field, I would have kept Juan Soto. I w- exactly. Right. I w- absolutely. I would have kept him. I'd much rather have him on the team than, than Hassan Kim. I mean, he's not as much of a fan favorite, I guess, but you can't, make decisions no. based on emotions because no. the fans chant his name. The fans loved Fran Mill Reyes. Oh, he was a good player, huh? Correct. They loved Fran, <laughs> they loved Fran Mill Reyes. He said, I will always love you. He's like, right, fan favorite. People were pissed when they got rid of him. Yeah. How does that, how do you feel about that right but now? K, but K, HS, HSK is way better. He's so much better. He is better, than, but than the reason why people want him is because he's a fan favorite. They like so, or, No. Oh, yes. Okay. There is some, there's credence there's to that. There's a lot of that. So would you say, so you want to trade him then before the season starts? It's one of your value. You can't trade him in the middle of the year for a couple of reasons. One, you're either in contention, which would be stupid to trade him. Or two, you're not going to get nearly as much out of him. And at that point, if you're in the position where you can trade Hassan Kim, the Padres are in a bigger world of hurt than we expected. And it would have been better to trade him before the season started to prevent having to trade players at the deadline because you you don't have a full roster right now. So if you were to trade him, that you need to you got to fill that hole. And then especially if Manny, you know, we don't hole. know if he's going to get hurt. They're, like having that depth in the infield. You got Jackson Merrill. So you, you think move, he's, you he's, can he's, move Jay Cronenworth over to second base? You know, you could have Jackson Merrill start the year on the big league club. You can get his clock start if you wanted to. I mean, everybody keeps telling me Jackson Merrill's the second coming of a middle infielder, right? I mean, it's the same narrative over and over again. What I do not want to see is I do not want to see Jackson Merrill start the season on the major league club starting in left field. I do field, not yeah. want to see that. That would be catastrophically bad. I had some people <laughs> in the comments today be like. Well, you know, Fernando Tatis Jr. did that. He's not Fernando Tatis Jr. He's not a superstar. And where did Fernando start when he made the big league club? Shortstop, his natural position. Put him in a spot that he's used to playing 
Get him used to the major leagues. I don't even think Jackson Merrill is ready yet anyway, but if you yeah, are going to have him on the team, just like the same conversation I had with this guy about C.J. Abrams when they pulled him up, if he's going to get pulled up, he better be starting every single day. Otherwise, you're wasting his time. I think the same thing can be said about Jackson Merrill, and unless he's playing second base, there's no reason to have him up in the major league club. Why set him up for failure before the year starts and just mentally mess him up before before you even get going with a guy that is part of your core that you're trying to keep because you want to be the Dodgers and facilitate your major league roster with young prospects. I still you could trade him at the deadline. I think you could. I mean, yeah. Do you, you think do you, you think could, the Padres are going to be well, in contention? Let me, let me ask you this. They're three games out of a wild card spot and they trade Hassan Kim. What's the fan base doing? Oh, they're gonna they're gonna freak season. out whatever they're gonna they're freak, freak out dude, regardless. That is a major freak <laughs> they're out. They're gonna you freak out regardless. You can't you can't pigeonhole yourself in the training at the deadline because this is what's gonna happen. They're gonna be within striking distance because the Padres with their stars that they have, they're good enough to compete and be around a playoff spot. Fernando and Xander's gonna have a better year and Machado and you got you got good solid players that if they play the way they're capable of playing they can hang with the Reds and the Marlins and the Rockies and probably the Giants as they're constructed right now. I mean, start thinking about some of the teams you're going to be competing for a wild card spot for. They can hang with those teams, and at the trade deadline, they're going to be within a couple games of those spots. You know, at this this Padres team is too as much as they're not the team they are last they were last year. They're not catastrophically bad where they're going to be like. 20 games out of a wild card position at the trade deadline. They will probably be within five games. If your major league club is within five games, the team you root for is within five games of a wild card spot at the trade deadline, do you want them to buy or do you want them to sell? I want them to buy. I want them to buy. You want them to buy. The whole point is being in the, the playoffs. Time. I want to buy. So if you're within five games, right, of a wild card spot, which means you're, what, in seventh place in the National League? potentially more and you trade Hassan Kim I mean are you kidding me can you handle that so what do you think okay then when do you when is he getting traded then you should trade him before the season starts is what I'm saying do it as soon as Boris so the third week of February he's gonna be like before spring training they've been shopping him for the last month and a half I'd pull the trigger on something close, especially if I can get two major league players. Now, I wouldn't trade him just to trade him. I need two major league players back. Starters, I need, like I need ready to go. Right. And you got to trade him to some place that has a need for a shortstop that is willing to sign house on Kim. The Marlins have a need for a shortstop. The Rays have a need for the shortstop. But the Rays don't make any sense because they don't sign older players to long-term deals. So why would you... Why, I mean, you're not going to get anything out of the Rays for them. You might convince the Marlins to do something like that, but they're cheap too. I mean, you got to find the right partner for that. But I would be trying to trade him as quickly as possible. He's going to be on the roster. <laughs> He's going to yeah, start well, opening and, day. And, and, and you know what? Will be, and probably. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to let him walk at the end of the year because yeah. they can't afford him. And then, and then <laughs> what's going to happen? Right? And then you get nothing for him, which I was okay with with, with Juan Soto because the ass the, what he brings to a team is a little bit different than what Hassan Kim brings to the team, aside from people chanting his name. He's Matt Perez. That's Will Galvez. We've been talking for an hour and a half. Thanks again for joining us on the live stream. Be sure to follow all of our outlets. Uh, Gas Lamps Finest Media. We are on social media. We are Gas Lamps Finest on Instagram. Gas Lamps Finest on X, Twitter. Gas Lamps Finest on TikTok. GasLampsFinestMedia.com. Check out all of our platforms. Subscribe to us on our YouTube page at Gas Lamp Media. Um, and follow our links. We'll, we'll be doing this every single Tuesday. We're going to get our audio-only podcast up as soon as I get the RSS feed, and that will be wherever you get your podcast. Good opening show. Thanks again for joining us today, and we'll be back next week. Matt, good job. Will, talk to you next time. Peace. See ya.